We have politicians, bureaucrats and even police in this country who are stepping way over the mark, forgetting who employs them, forgetting their roles, forgetting basic freedoms, the rights and responsibilities that should apply to all of us. Just have a look at what's happening when it comes to borders in this country. A 28-year-old Perth woman has been sent to jail for six months for sneaking back into Western Australia. She'd been in Victoria to visit a sick relative, but instead of spending two weeks in quarantine at a cost of $2,500, she sneaked back into the state of Western Australia in the back of a truck. Now she'll serve at least three months in jail before being eligible for parole. Look, she broke the rules, sure. Should she have been shunted into quarantine and fined? I suppose. But jail? At a six-month Sentence? There are violent criminals around this country who regularly escape sentences like that. Our authorities are losing the plot. Another example, again from the West, there have been plenty of reactions to Jeff Kennett's railing against the curfew and state of emergency in Victoria, thanks to your responses to our interview last night, by the way. Remember he described Daniel Andrews as a megalomaniac for wanting to extend his powers for another 12 months. He might keep a state of emergency in place until we have a vaccine. We may never have a vaccine. We don't have a vaccine for SARS. So what's he talking about, for goodness sake? Name one other state that has curfews. Are we all going to be locked up at the whim of the Premier without any checks and balances? This well, is an act of a megalomaniac. Jeffrey. But have a look at this response from Western Australia. A Western Australian police station tweeted back to Kennett on Twitter saying, a complete lockdown like New Zealand is what's needed. Come on, Victoria, wake up. Well, far, apart from being wrong, what do the West Australian police think they're doing? What, what role do they have in urging health responses and lockdowns anywhere, especially in Victoria? We got a response back from them late today. They say that was an accident. It was supposed to be from the police officer's private account, not the police stations. This is symptomatic, isn't it, though, of a rise of authoritarian rule on the back of this pandemic. So many people are showing their true nanny state colours. Too many rules are never enough. It's a great worry that so many Australians are accepting this. Take the Queensland border with New South Wales. We've had parents kept from visiting their newborn son taken to Brisbane for life-saving treatment. We've had a toddler initially refuse the right to return home to Queensland without quarantine after open heart surgery in Sydney. And we've shown you many examples of hardship, separation and service disruption on the South Australia-Victoria border. Listen to this woman who, with her husband, runs farms either side of that border. They were refused the right to travel between them before finally getting approval after having to rent another house closer to the border. What we don't support is the red tape that us as farmers have to cut through just so that we can continue to look after our livestock and our livelihoods, the things that matter to us. Someone needs to be accountable and take responsibility for what these reckless decisions are doing to us, our families and the farming community. Now, we've highlighted a lot of those issues over the past week or so, and we've crossed down to that region regularly to bring you personal episodes, personal, personal exemptions, personal trials and tribulations along that border. And I'm pleased to say we've had some success with a dramatic back down today by the South Australian Premier. The buffer zone uh, that previously existed with Victoria uh, will be reinstated as of Thursday night at midnight. So as of Friday, uh, school students uh, will be able to return uh, to school in South Australia. Uh, businesses will be able to resume exactly and precisely as they were. Good on him. There's more to do, and I'll cross back down to that region later in the program, but that is a welcome reversal from Stephen Marshall. There have been some new relaxations on border rules too along the Murray between the Victoria and New South Wales. That's another promising step. But the main action, of course, always remains south of the Murray at the moment in Victoria, where the data increasingly shows the real problem is in aged care centres, not in the broader community. But Daniel Andrews is continuing on with his plan to try and extend those state powers of emergency for 12 months, and he's refusing to bow to those who accuse him of an authoritarian approach. Well, that's wrong. Uh, that's not accurate in any way. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm not particularly interested in having those sort of debates. 
Now, remember, if you don't like being lectured to by him, he's got his celebrity friends helping out on television. Wear a mask. If it's not on, it's just not on. It's not the lockdown that's the enemy, it's the virus. And the sooner we obey the rules, the sooner this will all be over and we can get back to the stuff that really matters. If it's not on, it's not on. So whack one on your face. So stay home as much as you can, and if you do have to go out, make sure you wear a mask and wash your hands. We can win this race, can't we, buddy? Yes, we can. You know, this virus, it fights dirty. But if we play by the rules, we can give it a knockout blow. There you go, Victorians. You've been told what to do by those famous people. Better follow the rules or you'll be sent to your room. Trouble is, you're locked in your room already. How could they be so patronising? Textbook stuff, this. The so-called elites lecturing the infantile mainstream. That's how they see it. How could politicians be so out of touch? How could they think that way? How could they be so sanctimonious and tone deaf and then do it all with taxpayers' money? Well, now we know the answer. The idea came straight from the ABC. Well, at least the ABC's long-time morning radio host, John Fain, who retired earlier this year. So I'm deeply grateful to uh, John Fain, who uh, uh, was uh, perhaps uh, behind this, having suggested that we use some really well-known Victorians. A little bit of humour, uh, even though this is a challenging time, some humour is sometimes a very good thing to try and just remind people uh, that we all have a part to play. A little bit of humour. There you go. It was the blind leading the blind. And instead of easing restrictions, instead of focusing on those things governments should do well, like contact tracing, infection control and quarantine, Victorians are stuck with an author authoritarian government that's uh, drunk on power, a government that's suspended parliament but wants to recall it only to extend its powers, a government that imposes recklessly draconian laws and then cooks up a plan with a Green Left former ABC radio host to get celebrities to tell the little people just to shut up and do what they're told. Someone needs to tell Daniel Andrews to take a day off. He's become consumed by this thing and sees every infection as a political stain. He needs to go for a walk, leave his mask at home, get some perspective. Just have a serious think about the real issues and the real responses. No Australians deserve to be treated like this.